What's up, Blue Roof Nation, and welcome back to Character Spotlight. I'm your host, as always, Jonathan. And uh, this week, I thought I would talk about... I thought I'd keep it with the theme of last week. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This time, go with mine and everyone else's favorite character, William Pratt. William the Bloody Spike. Alright, so who is Spike? Well, he was an English poet. He was a mama's boy. He lived at home with his mom, took care of her, wrote poetry. He was in love with this girl who may or may not have become a vengeance demon later on. I think she did. And he wrote, he wrote poetry, really bad poetry. And everyone in town made fun of him. They used to call him William the Bloody for his bloody awful poetry. They used to call him Spike because they'd rather have a railroad slammed through their head. All things that he would later do. Foreshadowing. <clears throat> so he, he finally tried to tries to confess his love to the girl and she rejects him and he storms off storming past the group of three people walking a guy and two girls the guy was Angelus, the girl was Darla and Drusilla Drusilla now Angel Angelus was kind of messing around with both of them and Drusilla was growing tired of being the third wheel so Darla's like well, why don't you go find your own so she goes off and she finds William. She, she sees William running and she's kind of psychic. So she knows William's soul. She knows who he is and she goes after him. And she embraces him. She turns him into a vampire and brings him into this whole new world. And it's, it's freeing for him, but at the same time, he's the same person. When uh, Liam became Angelus, he changed. Well, he did it. It's, it's Buffy, the Buffy vampires tend to just be exaggerated versions of themselves. So William was a romantic. So when he became a vampire, he was even more of a romantic. He was a mama's boy, so he became more of a mama's boy. His mom was sick, he was always taking care of her. So what did he do? He went and turned her into a vampire so that she could be with him forever. Drusilla was kind of weirded out by this and I really don't blame her because it is a very weird thing. His mom then tries to seduce him and he has to kill her because no, that's not okay. <laughs> and it's very creepy. Um, so William and Drusilla go and team up with uh, Angelus and Darla, and they become the Whirlwind, my favorite group of vampires. Um, so Angelus kind of takes William under his uh, under his wing and tries to show him the ropes, but at the same time, put him in his place and tell him, "I'm the alpha here. You ain't shit." And William starts rebelling. His accent changes from kind of upper class to kind of like lower working class. He dyes his hair blonde, streaks it back, starts calling himself Spike. Um, and he ends up killing two different slayers. Uh, this girl there in the, the Boxer Rebellion. And then Nikki Wood, a slayer in the 70s in New York. That's actually where he got his, uh, his leather jacket was from killing Nikki Wood. He also, uh, he likes to steal jackets. During World War II, he killed a Nazi and stole his jacket because why not? Uh, him and Drusilla were like this big love throughout time. You know, they went everywhere together, did everything together. Um, well, after he killed the girl, uh, after he killed Nikki Wood, him and Drusilla eventually found their way to Prague where they were attacked and she was badly, badly damaged. So Spike took her to the Hellmouth to try to recover. And part of the spell required um, the the sacrifice, the blood of uh, her sire, which would be Angelus. So they kidnap Angel. He has Spike and Drusilla have run-ins with the Slayer Buffy, and the spell works. But Angel, Angel lives. Drusilla's restored, and a building falls on Spike, and he's dead. Except fan reaction to Spike was so overwhelming that Joss Whedon kept him alive, and he just put him in a wheelchair. So Angelus and Drusilla were now the big bads, and Spike was just this guy in a wheelchair who was just kind of like, yeah, I'm smart as Comet, smart as Comet. But then uh, we find out that he's faking, he's not really here. Well, he was here, but now he's better. And he teams up with Buffy to take down Angelus so that he can get Drusilla back. And they run off, never to be seen from again. Until the next year when he comes and kidnaps Willow. Oh, he kidnaps Willow and Xander and tries to get her to perform a love spell on... Uh, and Drusilla to win her back because she cheated on him with a chaos demon, which is this weird demon with slimy antlers. Why would anyone cheat on Spike with that? I don't know. But, um, so then he figures out, like, I don't need her. 
my favorite line ever. I may be love, I may be love's bitch, but at least I'm mad enough to admit it. And he runs off to go find uh, Drusilla because he doesn't need a love spell. He's gonna get her back the old-fashioned way. He comes back the next year. He didn't get her back. <laughs> he uh, he steals the ring. He's actually dating Harmony, a former uh, Sunnydale High student, friend of Cordelia, who got turned into a vampire. And he finds the ring of Amara. Buffy steals it from him, sends it to Angel. He runs out to L.A. to try to get it. Doesn't work out too well for him. He comes back to Sunnydale to try to kill the Slayer. And he gets captured by the Initiative, who put a chip in his head. This chip keeps him from being able to hurt any humans. He can still hurt demons, but he can't hurt humans. He escapes, tries to bite Willow, can't do it. It's this whole impotency, 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 tries to bite Willow, can't do it. He's kind of impotent, but, you know, <laughs> it was really funny the way it was done. Um, so eventually he starts working with the Scooby gang because what else is he going to do? He's giving them intel on the initiative in exchange. They keep him safe. And then when he finds out that he can kill demons, he's like, hell, I can still fight. And he, he gets into it. You know, he starts scrapping around. Um, starts scrapping around. Yeah. He gets into it. You know, he starts scrapping around. But then Adam tells him, Adam is this robot demon hybrid thing and he tells them if you help me split the gang up i will remove the chip so spike does it adam kind of portrays them and spike ends up working with the slayers the, the scooby gang again um going into the next year spike starts to realize that he's in love with buffy it's something that drusilla told him a long time ago and he never wanted to believe well now he's starting to believe it and he's trying to prove to her that he loves he's trying to sabotage riley he even tries to kill a Harmony and Drusilla to please Buffy, but Buffy won't have any of it. Um, but then towards the end of the season, Buffy starts to trust him. She doesn't love him, but she trusts him. And he's kind of like the Scooby member that everyone hates except for Buffy, who's like, no, no, he's a good guy. And when she dies at the end of season five, he's devastated. Like, his whole world comes crashing down. And... It's to the point where, like, you, you, during season five, you start to see, like, he is a good guy. Like, when Joyce dies, Buffy mom, he, he gives her flowers. He gives he brings flowers to the house, but he doesn't put a card on it. And it's like, oh, he's just doing that to woo Buffy. And they're like, there's no card. He, he did it because he loved Joyce. Because him and Joyce got along. I don't understand. I hated Joyce. But he liked her, and they got along, and so he did it for her, you know? And it's just the type of guy he was. So when Buffy died, there was nothing keeping him there anymore. But what did he do? He went with... Uh, he went with Don. He stayed and helped the Scooby gang keep Sunnydale safe, and he kind of took a big brother approach to Don. He didn't have to do that. There was nothing keeping him there. They brought Buffy back, and he was pissed, and rightly so. Um, but she was different, and they started having a relationship. He also found out that he could hurt her, and that's kind of what caused them to eventually, you know, consummate the relationship. And they had a very self-destructive, abusive relationship for a long time until she finally called it off at which point he tried to force himself on her and he realized what he did and it was wrong and he ran away because he didn't want to be the type of person who would do that even if he is a soulless demon he still was like I can't I can't be that guy she deserves better she deserves someone who would never try to hurt her like that so he runs off and he goes through these trials and during the trials you think that he's trying to get the chip removed be the man that he used to be it's not till uh, the next year that we find out that he got his soul back. And he's living in the basement of the school going crazy. Not just because of all the guilt that he has, but also because the first evil is suggesting things to him. The first evil even implants um, a control in him. That every time it sings a song, he'll go crazy and start killing people. And the first is allowing him to kill people without the chip hurting. Because the chip is also starting to malfunction. Uh, Robin Wood comes, the son of Nicky Wood, the Slayer, and he tries to kill Spike, and Buffy stops him, and they end up removing the chip from his head, getting rid of the control that the first had on him, and Spike is the only one who stands by Buffy when everyone else turns on her. Everyone else turns on her, and he stands by her. And they spend the night together. We don't know if they did, if they slept, but they just cuddled, but it's kind of like they, uh, they resumed their old, uh, the old relationship, but now it's a much healthier version of it. Angel comes to town, gives Buffy a necklace. She gives it to Spike because he's the only one who can wield it. Well, Spike and Angel are the only two that can wield it. A vampire with a soul who is a champion. And Spike is now a champion. He sacrifices his life to destroy Sunnydale, to destroy the first and save the day. 
he gets resurrected in Los Angeles at the law firm of Wolfram and Hart, which Angel is now running. <laughs> he meets Lindsay, who tells, well, first he's a ghost, and he's slowly getting sucked into hell. But then um, he gets a box that makes him recorp, uh, corporeal, corporeal. He finds a box that makes him physical again, and you know he's back, and he meets uh, Lindsay, who's going by Doyle now, which is the name of the guy who kind of helped Angel when he all started out. And Lindsay's sending Spike on these missions. He's basically turning him into Angel from season one, and Angel doesn't like it. Eventually, Spike and Angel start working together, and Spike kind of joins Team Angel. But Spike and Angel are always like button heads nonstop. Um, but when it's all said and done, and the dragons and the hordes of evil are rushing at him, Spike is right by Angel's side, and they go to hell together. Uh, Angel also, Spike also had a strong relationship with Fred. They were very close friends. And when she became Anara, he was the only one that Anara was like. Anara kind of wanted him as a pet. <laughs> and so Spike is a pet. And so she kept him around. And whenever they go to hell, um, Spike and Anara take over a section of Los Angeles for themselves. But eventually, you know, they team up with Angel and they help get LA out of hell. At which point, Angel kind of opens up a new Angel investigation and him and Spike are there until so Spike goes off on his own. And when he goes off on his own, he has a, a, an adventure around the world with these cockroach-like creatures. And he eventually brings them to help Buffy stop Twilight, who is, in fact, Angel. Not Angelus, but Angel. Angel is the villain of season eight. Spoiler alert. And it's slow going, but Spike and Buffy eventually uh, get back together. And they're dating again. And that's where we're at now. Spike, he's, he's the man with a soul. He's the man with a, a heart. He's more more human than any other character in the Buffyverse. And he's my personal favorite. And James Marster is an amazing actor. I've actually met him. Uh, you see that right there? You see that right there? I've actually met him. Great guy. And yeah, so that is Character Spotlight. I'm Jonathan. Have a week. If you like this, hit subscribe. Hit like and uh, comment anybody you want me to talk about. I do this every week. See you later.